Out of memory errors are some of the most misunderstood crashes in Go. They seem random and heap profiles don't always help. Today I'm going to give you something more valuable than just commands or tools. I'm going to give you the mental model to understand why out of memory issues happen. This isn't just about checking how big your heap is. We'll go deeper into native memory, memory fragmentation, and how the operating system decides to kill your process. This is a technical deep dive, no fluff, just pure knowledge transfer. Let's get into it. First, let's clear up a common misconception. When you see an out of memory error, it's not Go making that call, it's the operating system. Here's how it works. Your operating system assigns a fixed amount of memory to your process, and if your process exceeds that allocation, the OS says, nope, you're done, and kills it. The OS does not care if your heap is low, it only cares about the total memory used. And this includes heap memory, which is managed by Go's garbage collector, native memory, which is external memory that Go did not allocate, and memory overhead for stacks, kernel space, and system calls. If any of these add up to the memory limit, you are dead. And this is why you can have an out of memory issue, even if your heap usage looks normal. Okay, let's start with what you're probably most familiar with, which is the heap. Heap memory is where your slices, maps, and structs live. It's managed by Go's garbage collector, and this is where most people focus their out of memory debugging efforts on. But let me tell you something important. If you're only looking at the heap, you're missing the bigger picture. So the garbage collector runs periodically and reclaims memory. But if your heap grows faster than the garbage collector can clean it up, you'll see a steady increase in memory. The heap size depends on two factors, garbage collector pressure and allocation rate. If you see your heap graph steadily climbing, you might have a memory leak. But if it suddenly spikes and crashes, it's often native memory, not the heap. An important question to ask yourself is, why does Go's garbage collector not control certain memory allocations? Let's step back and understand what the garbage collector actually does. So Go's garbage collector is responsible for tracking and reclaiming heap memory, specifically memory that's allocated using make, new, or other Go native methods for slices, map, structs, and objects. The catch is that not all memory is on the heap. There's also memory outside of the heap that the garbage collector does not control. For example, direct memory allocations with syscall.mmap. Memory allocated via syscall.mmap lives in native memory, not the Go heap. The OS, and not Go, manages mmap allocations. An mmap is used for memory mapped files or large binary buffers. It lets you load large files into memory as if they were part of your program's memory space. And what this means is that Go has zero visibility into this memory because it didn't allocate it. Since the garbage collector only tracks memory created using Go's make or new commands, any memory mapped via mmap is essentially invisible to the garbage collector. Libraries that do file I.O., memory mapped files, and image processing libraries often use mmap, and these are common culprits. Okay, so syscall.mmap is a specific example of native memory. What else? There's also large buffers used in io.copy. When you stream large files, temporary buffers are created, and they can grow out of control. Also, C libraries. If you're calling C code with C Go, it might allocate memory the garbage collector can't see. Here's an example with mmap. You have a Go app that calls syscall.mmap to load a large file. The file is, say, 500 megabytes, but Go's GC does not know it exists. The OS knows, though, and when your app crosses its memory limit, it gets killed. The painful part about this is that the memory won't show up in heap profiles. So the heap profile looks fine, but the process still gets killed. Hmm, now we know why. Now let's get into memory fragmentation. It's an issue that sneaks up on you in long-running services. Here's what happens. Your app keeps allocating and freeing memory in small chunks. Over time, it creates holes in the memory, like Swiss cheese. You have plenty of free memory in total, but no single block is big enough for a new allocation. It's kind of like trying to park a big car in a parking lot full of small gaps. Even though there's enough total space, there's no spot big enough for your car. And this can cause out-of-memory issues, especially in long-lived processes like servers and batch jobs. Fragmentation builds up slowly and can be difficult to detect. To catch it, you need to look at Go's pprof memory profiles or use OS-level tools like smem or pmap. So when you're debugging an out-of-memory issue, it's important to really take a step back. Look at the bigger picture. I'm going to give you a sample approach that I personally recommend. First, start with the operating system. Check the system logs to see if there's any messages indicating that the OS killed your process due to memory constraints. The OS doesn't care about your heap, it cares about the total memory consumption. Next, look at the total memory usage, not just Go's heap. Sometimes your application might not be overusing the heap, but could be consuming too much memory elsewhere. After that, check your heap profiles. If you notice that the heap keeps growing without being collected, it could be a sign of a slow memory leak or inefficient memory allocation. 
These heap profiles give you a good understanding of how memory is being used by your Go application. And of course, don't forget about native memory. If the heap looks fine, but your app is still crashing, native memory could be the culprit. This includes memory used by things like syscall.mmap or large buffers used in IO operations. Remember that these allocations are outside of Go's garbage collector's control and can easily cause out of memory issues without showing up in the heap profile. Also consider memory fragmentation. Fragmentation can happen when your application allocates and frees memory over time, which leaves tiny little holes in memory that cannot be filled. This might lead to situations where you have enough total free memory, but can't allocate a large enough block. And here's a small bonus on lock contention and critical section size. In Go, when a Go routine is blocked while waiting for a lock, it remains in memory. It doesn't immediately release the resources it has allocated, such as stack memory or other temporary objects. If a large number of Go routines are all waiting on the same lock, the system starts to accumulate a significant amount of memory usage, even if none of these Go routines are actively doing work. These Go routines in the waiting state still hold onto memory, and if these Go routines remain blocked for long periods due to poorly managed or large critical sections, the amount of memory in use starts to grow. And this can be very problematic if memory isn't being released as expected, particularly in high concurrency environments. The big takeaway here is that debugging out of memory issues is not just about checking heap usage. If you're only looking at heap profiles, you'll potentially miss 80% of the real issues. Remember this small checklist. If it's a runaway heap, check pprof. If it's native memory, look for mmap, io.copy, or c code. And if it's fragmentation, look for low heap but frequent out of memory kills. If you learned something new from this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share it with someone who's been pulling their hair out over out of memory issues. And if you'd like to support the channel and help it grow, feel free to buy me a coffee using the link in the description below. And as always, thank you very much for watching and happy coding.